Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to solve a problem in statics using something called the method of sections. What we've got here is a 2D pin jointed truss. Now if you've taken a statics class before, or maybe you're in one now, you might know that there's basically two ways to solve this problem. The first is called the method of joints, which is kind of a funny name, but there it is. And the other one's called the method of sections. Well, the method of joints, what you do is you solve for the reaction forces, and then you start moving point by point by point across the structure to get to the element you want. Now, it's not very hard, but it can be a little tedious. The method of sections fixes that problem. The method of sections lets you go directly to the elements you're interested in and solve only for those, or mostly only for those. So it uses the same kind of statics principles that method of joints uses, but it gets you the ability to analyze parts of a complex structure pretty easily. So let's try it. So the first thing we're going to need is a truss. Well, I've got one right here. And this is one I made up, but this is the kind of thing you see in, in statics textbooks a lot. And it's made up of four bays. Now, the bays are kind of the repeating elements here. And the bays are all four uh, meters wide and three meters high. So the uh, sharp-eyed among you will note that these triangles are all three, four, five right triangles. Now, if this isn't something you've seen before, a three, four, five right triangle looks like this. So there's three, four, five. There are a couple of triangles out there where for the, uh, when you apply the uh, Pythagorean theorem, you get whole numbers. So the 3, 4, 5 right triangle is one of those. And you see this a lot in, in homework problems, just because it's so easy to work with. The thing that makes this nice is that when it's time to find sines and cosines and tangents and things, you don't have to use your calculator. Sine is 3 over 5. Let's see, make sure here. There you go. There's theta. Sine is 3 over 5. Cosine is 4 over 5. And tangent is 3 over 4. You never even really need to know what theta is. I mean, you can figure it out if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. So these are all 3, 4, 5 right triangles and you're welcome. Let me get this out of the way. By the way, check out my new board here. This thing is great. It's four feet by eight feet. It's enormous. So I've got a lot more uh, real estate to play with on these videos. Hopefully they'll get better. So anyway, method of sections. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to cut the structure into two sections. Mm -hmm. And you put that cut it's called a fictitious cut. You don't actually get a big saw and go out and saw the structure in half. That would be bad. So we put a mathematical cut here, and it's usually called a fictitious cut. So we put a fictitious cut across the structure where we need it. Now, the, the way I wrote the problem down is find F59. Well, just to get you to the point where we know what that is, the way I've been numbering uh, points and elements and trusses is kind of similar to how they do it in finite element codes. So every point gets a number, and point starts with P, so I numbered them in purple. Hopefully these are big enough to see on the video. So I just, you can just start somewhere. I'm starting in the lower left corner and going around clockwise. So these are points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There's 10 points on this one. So we need to know how to identify all the different elements. Well, the easy way to do it is just to give it a number based on which two points it connects. So this element right here is element 1, 2, because it, can, it goes between points 1 and 2. So I wrote those in red, and I put a little line over them just to indicate those are, those are an element. This is pretty similar to how finite element codes work. If you go into the inside of them, they do, uh, they keep, do their bookkeeping kind of like this. The reason I'm doing it this way and not assigning them letters is there's only 26 letters. You, trust wouldn't have to be very big before you run out of letters. So this is, this is scalable. It works for any number of points and any number of elements. So we'll use that. So I'm trying to find the force in element 5-9. Well, there's element 5-9 here. Now oh, it's buried inside this truss. You want to, you know, we could start at one of the corners and start working through with method of joints, but man, that's a drag. So we're going to use a method of sections. What we're going to do here is I'm going to just put a fictitious cut right there. Okay, and I'll even label it. That's called a fictitious cut. It's there mathematically. It's not there physically. We're not actually cutting, cutting a physical structure. By the way, that would be a great band name. You have a band called Fictitious Cut. There you go. So what we're going to do here is once we've made the fictitious cut, we're going to separate the structure fictitiously into two points. 
well, or two sections. Now, since the structure is in static equilibrium here, every part of it has to be in static equilibrium. That's the big idea. So what this means is I can draw just the part to the left or to the right side here of the fictitious cut. I, actually, I could work with either the right side or the left side. doesn't matter. They're both in static equilibrium. If I work with the right side, I already know what the force is here on this end. If I work with the left side, I'll have to figure out what the reaction forces are. Not too hard. So let's work with the right section just because it's easier. So let me draw this up here. Okay, so there we go. Now, got to do a couple of things here to turn this into a free body diagram. Because remember, remember the recipe? Working diagram, free body diagram, equations of static equilibrium, and then solve for something. And the fifth optional step is to enjoy celebratory baked goods, which we may do here in a few minutes. So let's start labeling this here. Let's put that extra, that extra truss element in there. Sorry, folks. And it's not a free body diagram until you get a uh, positive sign convention. So there it is right there. And let's start putting forces on it. Well, I know there's force 4, 5, 5, 9, and 8, 9 where that cut was. Well, I don't know which direction they are. I'll take a guess. I'm guessing if there's, this is pulling down, something must be pushing up. So I'll guess that that's F59 right there. I'm guessing it's in that direction. Now, if I'm wrong, all that happens is that sign, the, the sign of that number comes out negative. So remember, physics doesn't know or care anything about your sign convention. Physics just works. The sign convention, coordinate systems and things like that, those are for us. Those are something we invent to uh, keep track of things. So it, it will. It'll, it'll take care of us. So if I happen to have guessed wrong, all that's going to happen is F59 will come out negative. That's okay. Negative number is just as good as a positive one. One's not better than the other. So let's see. I'm going to guess F, let's see, that's 8, 9, is going in that direction. I'm going to guess that F, 4, 5, is going in that direction. I might be wrong, but there we go. It doesn't matter if I'm wrong. The numbers will just come out negative. So let's think about this a second. When I separate this, when I draw the free body diagram of the right half, I'm cutting it free from the rest of the structure, fictitiously, of course. Well, the rest of the structure is still there. It's still doing its job. And the way it communicates its presence to this part right here is through the interface forces, the forces across the fictitious cut. And there they are right there. So step one of the recipe, working diagram. Step two, free body diagram. Step three. Equations of static equilibrium. Well, I only need F59 here. I, you could figure out F45 and F89 if you wanted to. Certainly wouldn't hurt anything, but we don't need it. So if I look at this, I can't help noticing this has a vertical component, that one has a vertical component, but the other two don't. All right. So let's just let's start there. Now, I'm going to call this angle here. Whoops. I'm going to run out of letters here. I'll call that one alpha, and I'll call that one theta. Now remember, theta is the same here as it is here. Theta here is the same as it would be there. So these are both theta. This is fine. I, I haven't violated any rules yet. Well, I'm going to need this in x and y coordinates, because if I want to sum the forces in the x and y directions, wouldn't it be great if the forces were actually in the f and y direction, or x and y directions? That would be great, wouldn't it? Let's do that. So let's see, it looks to me like Fy is going to be F, uh, let's see, cosine theta, or cosine alpha, and Fx is going to be F sine alpha. All right, I'm buying that. And since this is a 30 degree angle, this is going to be, I've got to put my, get my I've got the solution on my monitor, they're all blown up, so I'm checking to make sure I get the right number. So that's 866.02, whoops, 02.5 newtons there. So 86,602.5 newtons. I'm using six significant figures here, and I'll report the answer to four just because that's what I have my students do. And this is going to be 50,000 newtons. Okay, so there we are. We know what those are. Well, 
let's go ahead and replace uh, those on this uh, diagonal force on the free body diagram with the components, okay? Just to make sure we don't get confused. So let's get rid of that. There we go. That's Fy. And I'll just put Fx right there. Okay, pretty good. So the next thing I need to do is break F59 down into its horizontal and vertical components. Well, let's pause for a second here. There's a big idea that, when, that uh, I have, have kind of tap danced around. It's time to face it. I don't know exactly where that fictitious cut is. I didn't tell you. I didn't, there's no dimension here. So it's just somewhere between 0.4 and 5 and 0.8 and 9. I don't know where. Turns out it doesn't matter where. Here's why. I can extend a force along its line of action as far as I want to in either direction. So it turns out I don't need to know where these are. When I'm summing forces in the horizontal direction, I know that, I know that, I'll be able to figure out the horizontal component of that. When I'm summing forces in the vertical direction, I'll be able to figure out the, hor the vertical component of that. So the only problem is if I'm figuring out moments, I do need distances. But remember, I only need perpendicular distances. So if I extend this along its line of action, I can figure out the perpendicular distance as I need to. It's not going to be a problem. So let's uh, uh, move on here. Since I've got the vertical component there, I'm going to need a vertical component there. Let's, let's go ahead and draw this force triangle out. There's theta, and remember theta is down here, down there, up there, it's up there as well. So I've got thetas all over the place. I'll grab this one. That's F59, that's F59X, and that's F, I'm sorry, Y. Let's try that again, that's terrible. F59Y, there we go, that looks better. Well, that looks like a force triangle to me, doesn't it? To you? So if I wanted to know what F59Y was, let's see, F59Y, F59 must be sine theta, yes? Well, sine theta, since this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, let's, let's draw down here. Let's remind ourselves what a 3, 4, 5 right triangle is. In this one, it's 3... 4 and 5, and that's theta. Sine must be 3 over 5, right? Yeah, let's try this again here. There we go. 3 over 5. That's it. So I don't have to use my calculator. I don't even need to know what theta is. I, I never figured it out. Doesn't matter what it is. So what I need now is. 59y f59 sine theta and that is if I want to know what f59 is oops okay so f59y is f59 sine theta and I know what sine theta is so it's 3 over 5 times F59. That's it. That's all, all we got to do here. So we're about ready to write equations of static equilibrium. Even on my new enormous board, I'm still running out of room. So I'm going to erase this stuff over here and write out the equations of static equilibrium. Only, there's really only going to be one. I really only need the vertical one. So let's do that. Okay, so let's write out some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. And the y direction is vertical. And so I'm going to write sub V E R T because there is an F Y on this on this drawing already. There's an F Y right there. So if I write sum of F in the y direction, then it starts to look ambiguous. Some of the vertical forces, that's not ambiguous. That's zero. 
So it's minus Fy plus F59y, and that's it. So if I know one, I know the other one. So F59y equals Fy, all right? And that's a number. I know what that is. That's 80, 86,602.5. And let's see. So that's going to be F59y. There. There's 3 over 5 F59. Well, that's what I want, isn't it? So from here, F59 is, oops, sorry, 5 over 3. There it is. Okay, that's 5 over 3 times 86602.5 newtons. And that turns out to be, okay, had to step away for a minute. My uh, screen on my computer went to sleep while I was talking, so I had to go turn it back on again so I could see what the number was. It's 144,337.6, pretty much. So, 1, 4, 4, 3, 3, 7.6. Now, that's an awful lot bigger than that vertical force. That's 86,000. This isn't quite double that. So does this pass the sniff test? I think it does, and here's why. So the vertical component of the force acting on it is 86,602, close to 90,000. This angle here isn't very big. I figured it out, and it's actually about 36.87 degrees. So the vertical component of this, of F59, is not very big compared to F59. It's a little over half. So if the vertical component is a little over half, it would make sense that this number wasn't quite twice what this is, because we're dividing by that half. Well, it's not quite twice what this is. Double that would be 170-some uh, thousand. I'm a little less than that. Okay, this makes sense. It does make physical sense. It passes the sniff test. If it's wrong, it can't be very wrong. And I want you doing this every time you calculate a number. Pause and ask yourself, could this be the right answer? If it looks plausible, keep going. If it looks like something is just bonkers wrong, stop. You've made a mistake. Do this all the time. You'll make fewer mistakes. And here's the best part. Your boss will think you're smarter than you really are. That's always a good thing. So here we go. This is the method of sections. We've showed you how to make a fictitious cut in a reasonably complicated structure. And we found the force in one of the internal elements with one equation. That doesn't usually work out this well, but it worked out pretty simply. The big idea is that method of sections allows you to sol solve for forces in a small part of the structure, where the method of joints requires you to start out at the edge somewhere and start working your way in point by point by point. So if you only need one or two forces, method of sections is the way to go. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.